There is a new museum in Charleston, South Carolina, dedicated to hundreds of years of African American history. It's black history in global context and through individual stories, too. Now, to show off the expanse and residence of the museum's Center for Family History, researchers traced my genealogy. Now, listen, as a black man with deep roots in the American South, I thought I knew where my story was headed. I was very wrong. Very few moments in my career have ever brought me to this. This is, oh, man. It happened at the International African American Museum in Charleston, South Carolina, which opens this month. Six centuries of history packed into 150,000 square feet at the historic Gadsden's Wharf. Above 40% of all enslaved Africans would have come in through Gadsden's Wharf. We've been referred to as the ground zero of importation of enslaved people into the United States. Dr. Tanya Matthews is the museum's president and CEO. Space of solemnity mm. or celebration? Yes, I uh, refuse to choose. Tribal art and contemporary fashion, relics of protest and reports of resistance. It's this infusion of trauma and joy constantly um, that we like to, to talk about here. You get the full story, but you're going to get all the context in it. What arguably is the best illustration of full context is the Museum Center for Family History. It's a team of researchers with access to millions of records that can trace African-American lineage, sometimes back to a slave ship that came into this very port. The expert genealogist here spent months tracing my lineage. And this was the day of the long-awaited reveal. Make sure you got a box of Kleenex by you and sit there and enjoy. That's the museum's top genealogist, Dr. Shelley Murphy, on the laptop. She's joining us from the University of Virginia. This is a tree, just a snapshot of your tree, and I'm following your maternal line. Wow, that's a lot just seeing the tree. You see that box? Well, that represents David Venny, my great-grandfather's great-grandfather. He lived in coastal Richmond County, Virginia, on a farm with his wife Judy and their 18 children. And in 1871, he filed this claim to be reimbursed for livestock and supplies requisitioned by Union troops during the Civil War. Another thing that is significant is that he owned the land that he's on and it was 23 acres. Where did a man in yes. the 1870s, <laughs> so soon after the end of slavery, get the money to buy 23 acres? Absolutely. And, and the thing of it is, I would even question, he said he was freeborn. Well, for some answers, we have to go back more than 300 years to my great, 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 great grandmother, Mary. She arrived on a ship in Northumberland County, Virginia in 1712 before America was America. Her granddaughter, my eight times great grandmother, Bess, was with her. That's according to this centuries old deposition that Dr. Murphy's team uncovered. Why a deposition? We'll learn that a little later. And Bess at the time was about 13 years old. Witnesses apparently said they looked like they were Indians. Researchers believe that Mary and Bess were actually Matabani, like these people of that region of Virginia called the Northern Neck. We're not sure where they came from, but Thomas Smith of Richmond County did enslave one of Bess's children, and that was Sarah. And it's Sarah, my seven times great grandmother, who changes the trajectory of her children and all her descendants who followed. There was a law back in 1705 that declared that all children that are enslaved or free, their condition would be based on whatever their mother was. Remember, Sarah and Bess arrived free people. So Sarah has a lawsuit that's filed saying, we're free. This is the actual lawsuit filed by Sarah, suing for her freedom and for the freedom of her descendants. And that deposition, it was from a witness who saw Mary and Bess arrive decades earlier. So in 1791, the court agreed with Sarah and her children, the grandchildren, and all of those relatives who were descendants of Mary and Bess are gonna be free. That 
my ancestors um, filed and sued for their freedom. Um, it is remarkable. We're not done. We're not done. We're not done. Okay. We're not done. Let me get it. Let me get a Kleenex, Doctor. Uh, I, I told you to have a box there. All right. But not all of Sarah's family was free. Before the court's decision, Sarah's enslavers illegally sold her daughter, Rachel, and then Rachel was sold again. And for the next 20 years, unaware of the court's ruling, Rachel and her children remained in bondage. When she learned of the decision in 1807, more than a quarter century after her mother's groundbreaking lawsuit for freedom, Rachel filed this lawsuit against her enslaver, claiming that she was the daughter of a free woman, and therefore she and her children should also be free. And guess what? The witnesses and things all came through and they were awarded their freedom. So, what do you think? Man, this is, oh man. To be an enslaved woman, suing a slave master, to do it twice in one bloodline, is, and is Virginia, remarkable. Your line started out enslaved and became free to up until where you're at right now. It became free because those women okay, fought well, for it. I'm going to tell you what, Victor. The women in your family is unbelievable. Hmm. It fills in a lot of gray, a lot of blank space. There was nothing there. There was an assumption. Now there are names, relatives, and places, and stories. It certainly fills in more of the story of my family's place in this country. I am so grateful to the people at that museum. They spent months uh, researching my lineage, and they've given me this book. This has um, the documents, copies of the documents, and maps, and death records, and military records. Um, this is not what I expected. It is remarkable. It I, is not what I expected. I have to ask you, what was your mom's reaction? Oh, man. At my mother's reaction, first, I had explained it a couple of times, <laughs> right? Because no one expected this. Um, and it then started this kind of scavenger hunt for details. Uh, planning a trip back to Northumberland, LZ and Ron are still with us, to go and visit the Metapani. I mean, to know that these women sued twice and won. And in that day and age. Yes. For a woman, but for an... In the 18th it, it, century. Like a woman who'd been enslaved to sue. Yes. I can't even imagine. And the witnesses to come forward to support them... You're from strong stock, and, that's and, for sure. And, and <laughs> the we women were talking in your family. during the break, LZ, that it's so difficult to trace the lineage of African Americans because for centuries, um, enslaved people were inventory. Mm -hmm. They didn't keep uh, accurate birth and death and marriage uh, for as much as marriage was a recognized or acknowledged those records. Absolutely, and because of the constant selling and reselling and loaning and bringing back, it wasn't possible to keep up. You know what's so brilliant about the women in your family? Mm. It's that the law that you were talking about was designed because of all the sexual assaults, there were all these pregnancies, mm -hmm. and it was like, what do we do with these mixed-race children? They created that law so that those children would be born into slavery. The fact that you're, the women in your family took that law... Mm. And flipped it. And yeah. flipped it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, incredible research and incredible story. And I just found myself wondering, with all the restrictions on curriculum that are being imposed in about half the country, it will become extremely difficult, if not impossible, for many young people to kind of learn this story or its equivalent. I mean, it's, it's quite a moment in the country. Uh, our thanks again to the International African uh, American Museum. They have the resources on their website for you to start this journey of your own uh, as they continue to grow. They will do this on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but this is um, a stunning uh, display of African American history there at the port uh, in Charleston. Again, uh, thanks to them.